Blog Talk Radio. Live. Worldwide. Deliverance. With your host, Jay Bartlett. For the next few minutes, Jay will be exploring the unknown, the strange, and the supernatural. Ready or not, you are about to experience Deliverance. It was in West Hollywood. Marlene sat on the front row in the sanctuary of a messianic congregation. This is a, took place in West Hollywood, California. She was with her friend. She listened to my teaching intently and was very interested in hearing about the realities of spiritual warfare. However, she remarked she didn't think anything from a demonic element would be present within her own life. That quickly changed, though. Marlene, while we transitioned from teaching into Holy Communion, remarked how she felt unusual pains, pressures in her chest. What we discovered within her was astounding. She was demonized. A group of demons surfaced named Jezebel, and no surprise, witchcraft. They had invaded the family bloodline more than 1,200 years ago. It's just, it's, it's astounding to think of that, that reality that some spirits can be, these dark entities can be within you for 1,200 years. Well, the demons revealed much to me. We have been here for 30 generations the demons revealed. Her ancestors participated in more than more than a thousand years ago human and animal sacrifices. Well, my friends, these demons had brought a host of physical problems and afflictions to her. They were also enslaving her heart. I actually spoke to a little five year old dissociative identity, a little five year old girl within her that had been hurt. I also communicated with a few ancestral dissociative identities. One was birthed in 1844, another 1876. One was a man, the other a female. Both died as a result of heart problems, heart attack, heart disease, respectively. All these heart parts were, though, guided to Jesus for for healing. Mind you, all the spiritual phenomena within this lady... Within a lady who didn't even suspect she had demonic issues operating within her life. I mean, this proves once again, you just never know what might be operating within your life and who's targeting you. Within Marlene, unknown to her, were evil spirits, ancestral dissociative identities that was birthed in 1844, another 1876, and a handful of soul invaders. I actually spoke to these soul invaders. Several of them were actually involved in witchcraft. And we're utilizing black magic, sorcery, in an attempt to seduce her and to attack her. I mean, it's just staggering, isn't it, my friends? The amount of witchcraft in our day and age. Well, we're going to respond to the surge of witchcraft. And let there be no mistake, uh, that you should not be mistaken. There is a surge. Now, there's always been witchcraft. For thousands of years on earth, touching every continent of the world at one level or another. But the amount of witchcraft in culture, and society, in every sphere of life, it's almost like it's dominating societies, dominating cultures, dominating nations and communities and continents. Witchcraft is a force to be reckoned with. And there in West Hollywood, I dealt with it again. And I remember the previous night in Santa Barbara, California, during a seminar, we encountered someone who had, within many soul invaders, who were practicing witchcraft. I mean, my friends, this is a global 
phenomena and a global problem. This is a serious spiritual problem. Billions, so many billions with soul invaders. I'm convinced of that. We must intervene and offer deliverance and healing in Jesus' name. So today, I'd like to take a few moments to respond to the surge of witchcraft on today's edition of Deliverance. I'm Jay Bartlett, and I'll be here for the next few minutes exploring the unknown, the strange, and the supernatural. Ready or not, you're about to experience deliverance. bestowed upon this global mission an extraordinary ability to gently guide individuals into the heavenly realms where thousands are encountering the risen Jesus and experiencing numerous heavenly wonders. We have, perhaps, created the world's largest video collection of testimonies of those being caught up into the third heaven and experiencing the joys, the wonders, and the glories of God's heavens. These thrilling videos from around the world demonstrate that God loves and cares for us. Taste of His powers at jbartlettmissions.com Heavenly experiences are for real. Watch and see at jbartlettmissions.com You are listening to another thrilling edition of Deliverance with Jay Bartlett. These compelling podcasts are transformative, astounding, and inspiring. Lives are being encouraged, empowered, healed, restored, and liberated. Take a moment and support this global mission with a donation at jbartlettmissions.com. Visit the donate page and consider giving a recurring monthly donation. That's jbartlettmissions.com or call us at 877-483-5519. Thank you for your support to keep this worldwide mission alive. I'm Jay Bartlett. Thank you for taking a few moments to be with us as we respond to the surge of witchcraft. I just, just in recent months, I, I, I deal with I would deal with witchcraft on one level or another every single day. But just in the in the atmosphere, in the environment, I just more like, more so than any other time in my life, especially in the ministry. Nearly 35 years of serving Jesus Christ in the deliverance ministry. I've never felt so much witchcraft in the atmosphere. There's so much activity, the tension. I wonder, how, are you feeling it too, my friends? Are you feeling the powers of witchcraft rising up? It's strong. It's aggressive. It's forceful. And it, it will only respond to the forceful command by the power of Jesus Christ. You can't you can't treat witchcraft with medicine, with alternative uh, uh, methods of, uh, of uh, de- deliverance. Only deliverance is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. You want to respond to the surge of witchcraft, you have to resort to Jesus. You have to turn to him, turn to the power of his cross, the power of his blood, the power of his resurrection. You want to respond to the surge of witchcraft because there is a surge. And it's captivating billions. That's with a B. Billions. Make no mistake about it. Billions of people. You know, there was a demon named Satan that surfaced from within a young man recently, determined to destroy him. 
He boldly told me I couldn't stop stop him, that is the demon, from destroying this young man. I will kill him. That's what the spirits of Lucifer boastfully told me. I will kill him. He was serious, and he was determined. I was too. Demons do kill. Don't be naive. I mean, we're not to be fearful of these things, but you are to be sober-minded. That's what the Bible actually says. Be on guard. Be watchful. Diligent. Do your due diligence. Be serious. I was very serious. He, the demon was very serious. Jesus refers to Satan as a murderer. He's a killer. That's what Jesus tells us about Satan. He's a murderer, a killer. So you have to treat him seriously. I was serious. I was determined. And I would not be intimidated by these disgusting demons. I actually forced him to bow to King Jesus, which he eventually did. But these demons also bowed to the cross of Jesus. Actually, to be more specific, the cross of Jesus crushed them. It was a seminar in Southern California. It was extraordinary in so many ways. We witnessed some incredible, powerful miracles of healing and of deliverance. Even in the midst of the service, Jesus appeared to some who were present, and the holy angels of God swiftly arrived to assist me in delivering souls from the grasp of Satan. Now, speaking of the holy angels, I noticed towards the end of the service, I was just about to conclude the meeting when I glanced to Benny. And I noticed Benny was no longer present. He was vacant. A demon was glaring at me with disgust and murderous hatred. Benny was in a demonized, tranced like state. I commanded the demons to come up to the front. The demons resisted and opposed me, so I asked for the for the Lord to send his holy angels to assist me. They swiftly arrived and they carried the body, the Benny's body that was in a trance like state that had these demons. Carried him to the front of the meeting hall. So I could minister more effectively to him. At one point, the demons tried to halt his movement up to the front of the hall. However, the angels pushed him forward, and they ended up in the front of me. In the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, commanded the evil spirits to reveal by what right do they stay within him. Well, they spoke confidently. Well, he likes what we give him. The demons revealed he likes to supernaturally travel, to soul travel to other locations throughout the world. We discovered that Benny had been practicing the ancient witchcraft art of soul travel or astral projection, whereby a soul with the aid of an evil spirit travels in the unseen and seen realms to other locales to go from point A to point B supernaturally. I mean, Benny actually said, I wanted to be able to travel the world. This was the only way I could do this. Because Benny was wanting to travel, he was tempted to turn to evil supernaturalism to accomplish his goals. That opened gateways to the demonic, thus his demonic afflictions. I explained to him his need to repent of this practice and other indulgences in the occult. Thankfully, he readily repented, and I commanded the witchcraft and many other kinds of spirits out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. The demons entered into the abyss. And it goes back to like Marlene, the, the lady I was ministering to, to in West Hollywood. It could be in your bloodline, witchcraft. And, they have, and those generational issues have never been resolved. So they just remain, and they get stronger and get stronger. Now you could see how there's a surge of witchcraft, the powers of witchcraft, the atmosphere, environment, because the church has done, has done a lousy job, generally speaking, in, con in addressing and confronting and expelling evil. It, it, the, church, the church has the power 
for Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus loves the church. I'm a pastor. I love the church. But generally speaking, the church has not done a good job in this area, in dealing with witchcraft, especially when it comes from a generational standpoint. So we're talking about generation after generation. In Marlene's case, what, 1,200 years? 1,200 years, my friends. Well, it only gets stronger. No wonder we have so many problems in our day and age. Why there is a surge of interest, why it's so dominant in our atmosphere and culture and societies and nations and communities. Because it's never been addressed. It's never been confronted. It's never been driven out. So it's just gotten stronger and stronger as time goes on and on. And then people turning to it. Like in this case, Benny, he churned. He wanted to travel. So he thought the best way to travel would be with the aid of demons, and he tapped into the witchcraft art of soul travel and astral projection. This is something witch, witches do, warlocks do. Well, he, def- he, got, he got himself defiled. Leviticus chapter 19, I have the holy word in my hands tonight. Leviticus chapter 19, 31, give no regard to mediums, familiar spirits. Do not seek after them. Well, Benny, he sought after them. He sought after their powers. Do not seek after them, Moses writes in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. God's word is clear. You communicate, you, you connect with evil spirits, you, which if you connect in witchcraft, you're connected with evil spirits. You're in communion with them. And the Bible says so very clearly. Let me turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The answer is no. We must honor the Lord God Almighty. You must repent of witchcraft and then deal with your generational issues. I mean, Benny, look what happened. That night at the seminar, he got completely demon. He was in complete demonic control. I mean, they actually said he likes what we give him. He likes to supernaturally travel, to soul travel to other locations throughout the world. And he actually said we... He actually told me, he said, I wanted to be able to travel the world. This was one way I could do it. Because Benny wanted to travel, he was tempted to turn to evil supernaturalism to accomplish his goals. That opened gateways to the demonic, thus demonic afflictions. Just like Marlene, she had unresolved generational issues, demonic afflictions. I'm so, so concerned about the surge of witchcraft Gener- from a generational, unresolved generational uh, standpoint, from those churning to witchcraft, and I don't have the time. And now this could be a multi-part series on confronting, exposing, expelling, responding to the surge of witchcraft in our day and age. And by the way, I have written a book. I've written many books, but one book I want to really focus on on this podcast, is Overcoming the Occult, where I actually examine 40 rooted movements, phenomena, personalities, ideologies. And this book can open your eyes. This book could be a tool, a resource for you. I mean, I deal with everything from acupuncture to animism, apparitions, astrology, Automatic handwriting, astral projection, Bloody Mary, blood packs, black magic, Edgar Casey, clairvoyance, crystals, cursed objects, curses, dematerialization, demonism, divination, dowsing, evil eye, Freemasonry, ghost, goblins. I mean, you name it. From I deal with from A to Z in these in this encyclopedia-like uh, kind of uh, format. 
It's called Overcoming the Occult. Actually, this is volume one that we have released. It's Acupuncture to Halloween. It's 40 occult-rooted movements, phenomena, personalities, devices, and ideologies examined and exposed. If you go to jbartlandmissions.com or amazon.com and and punch in Overcoming the Occult, Volume 1. And I believe this book will help in some way uh, help you. Because it's it's been, I mean, the powers of witchcraft, the powers of the occult have been with us for thousands of years. And this realm, these powers, knows of no geographical boundaries, literally the world over. And we're speaking about every single continent has been exposed to the various forms of witchcraft and occultism. And the powers behind the occult have enslaved Billions of people. And in my travels throughout the world, I've discovered the mass appeal to the occult. For the witchcraft, the occult promises power, meaning secret knowledge, fulfillment, and spiritual satisfaction. And the occult appeal is universal. It's, It's found in Africa. It's found in Europe. It's found here in North America. It's found in Asia, in South uh, South America, the Middle East, the islands of the world. It's everywhere. And I've traveled throughout the world, circled the world many, many times. I'm here to tell you, it's everywhere. Occultism, witchcraft knows of no geographical boundaries. And once people turn to witchcraft, and many do. At some, even many believers in Jesus Christ are dabbling or have dabbled in the occult and witchcraft. As the Word of God tells us, it brings defilement. It brings defilement. Thus, the need for cleansing. You've been defiled, meaning the demons have contaminated, polluted your soul your body in various ways. You need the cleansing power of Jesus Christ. And only the blood, is that not true? Only the blood can take away the sin, can take away and and cleanse you, purify you. And later on in this podcast, I'm going to invite you to partake spiritually of the blood of Jesus Christ. Allow the precious blood of Jesus cleanse you and purify you and to take the curse of witchcraft out of your life. Now, going back to Benny, the demons were cast out. They entered the abyss. And during the exorcism, I also encountered little heart parts, brokenness. They were guided to Jesus for healing. I also confronted some soul invaders within him. They too were sent out of his mind and body in Jesus' name. And he he was just so happy. Benny was just so happy. He was extremely grateful afterwards for his newfound freedom in Jesus Christ. My friends, where is the church on this? Why is it that so many people, even most disciples of Jesus, are so terribly demonized? I deal with this basically every day in some manner. However, I I never seem to get over this. It's even difficult for me to grasp the sheer numbers of people that are demonically afflicted by the powers of witchcraft. There is a surge. It's blanketing the earth. We have to respond. And we have to respond with the superior power. It's the power of the blood of Jesus. And And by the way, it's not only the demonic afflictions that that alone. There's there's it. It's not only the demon issue, but it's also the sheer numbers of people with dissociative elements. The sheer numbers of people with the unresolved ancestral issues, namely the witchcraft curses, the idolatry curses. The sheer number of people with soul invaders. That mean meaning witches and warlocks within their lives. I mean, speaking of soul invaders, I think ninety percent of people of individuals we have been ministering to have these soul invaders within their lives. It's staggering. It's shocking even to me. You know, I 
often wonder, I'm just going to be honest, I often wonder, could this really be happening? But I just cannot deny the truth. Everywhere I go, it's present. I have encountered these spiritual realities in dozens upon dozens upon dozens of nations around the world. Tens of thousands of people. Yet the modern day church is in the dark about these realities. How can this be? There must be some deep blindness. Well, of course there is. That keeps church people from seeing I'm hoping as as we discuss this, as we talk about this, as the ministry, and when I speak about we, we speak about the, the ministry. I'm speaking about those involved in the ministry. Stay with me on this on this issue. It's our prayer that the church would be able to see. I'm hoping as I talk about these realities, it will awaken the body of Christ and the world, because I want the world to know. Those who may not even know the power of Jesus Christ, who are entrapped or dabbling in the occult, there is a way out. God will forgive you. There is a way out. Person of Jesus Christ. I'm just hoping as I talk about these realities, it will awaken the body of Christ. It will awaken you, my friends. It's my hope and prayer. Because I know on this podcast, there are people throughout the world listening. Many enslaved souls, from a generational standpoint, from dabbling in the occult, who've been defiled, who are waiting for us to intervene. And while I'm here today, behind this microphone, wanting to intervene, wanting to see you rescued, I'm in awe. And all praise goes to God for of the many souls being set free from witchcraft. There have been so many public displays of the superior powers of the cross of Jesus, crushing the inferior powers of the devil. I mean, these power demonstrations, these Jesus encounters, are awakening many and inspiring many to follow Jesus with all of their heart. So we're going to respond, and this could be a multi-part series on the surge of witchcraft and how to respond and, and speak about it, talk about it. We're not going to simply just ignore the subject, like the church has done for so many Decades, centuries, actually. We're going to respond to the surge of witchcraft. You are listening to another thrilling edition of Deliverance with Jay Bartlett. These compelling podcasts are transformative, astounding, and inspiring. Lives are being encouraged, empowered, healed, restored, and liberated. Take a moment and support this global mission with a donation at jbartlettmissions.com. Visit the donate page and consider giving a recurring monthly donation. That's jbartlettmissions.com or call us at 877-483-5519. Thank you for your support to keep this worldwide mission alive. God has bestowed upon this global mission an extraordinary ability to gently guide individuals into the heavenly realms where thousands are encountering the risen Jesus and experiencing numerous heavenly wonders. We have, perhaps, created the world's largest video collection of testimonies of those being caught up into the third heaven and experiencing the joys, the wonders, and the glories of God's heavens. These thrilling videos from around the world demonstrate that God loves and cares for us. Taste of His powers at jbartlettmissions.com Heavenly experiences are for real. Watch and see at jbartlettmissions.com I'm Jay Bartlett. Thank you for again for taking a few moments to be with us. And I would highly recommend as we speak about the subject of the occult and witchcraft and responding to the um the surge that's taken place. And there is a, definitely a surge. 
I would rec- I would highly recommend getting – and you, by the way, you can get a paperback or Kindle over my book titled Overcoming the Occult, Volume 1, Acupuncture to Halloween. Over 40 occult-rooted movements, phenomena, personalities, devices, and ideologies examined. From acupuncture to aliens, apparitions to astrology, to Bloody Mary, to black magic, to blood packs. Edgar Casey, clairvoyance, chanting, color therapy, cursed objects, dematerialization, divination, druidism, dowsing, ekinkar, evil eye, ESP, firewalking, freemasonry, ghosts, goblins, Halloween. I deal with it all. Overcoming the occult, volume one. So I think it's a 135-page uh publication and I'll encourage you to get your hands on it today. You can get a your copy at Amazon.com or simply go to J Bartlett Missions dot com. In recent years, as I've mentioned just a moment ago before the intermission break, I've seen a dramatic underscore the word dramatic increase of spiritual conflicts with the powers of witchcraft and Jezebel because You know, Jezebel is a wicked witch. Within those we are ministering to, in our missions to Australia, New Zealand, in nearly every ministry session I participated in, those two spiritual forces were present. I see it here in North America. I see it everywhere I go. I'm going to be in Africa, visiting multiple nations, going to the Middle East, see where else God will take us. And by the way, if you are wanting to support our international mission to Africa and to the Middle East, we could use your support. And perhaps you're listening in and and God has blessed you with some resources. Please consider giving at jbartlandmissions.com. There's a donate page. We would be eternally grateful. And your gift will enable us to change and transform family trees, meaning Families from generations to come will be different. They won't be contaminated and polluted. They'll be experiencing the cleansing, healing blood of Jesus Christ as people are saved, healed, and delivered in our meetings. And I would encourage you to do your part if you can. And I just want to thank you. You know, again, the modern church has done a dismal job, and we're trying... As many of you know, I'm, I'm a pastor of a very small church called the Jesus Church. Actually, there's a number of Jesus churches, but primarily in Vancouver, British Columbia. But I haven't been able to get back. Canada is experiencing some very rest- – just a lot of warfare. I haven't been able to get back to Vancouver. In fact, I had a small apartment in downtown – beautiful downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. And we had a Jesus Church there. And I, I've been – traveling into Vancouver, British Columbia, and the various cities, dozens of cities surrounding Vancouver for many, many years, and have seen thousands of people impacted with the gospel. But obviously, because of COVID, uh, I couldn't stay in the country. I'm a U.S. US citizen, so I'm back here in the U.S., but we continue on with the Jesus Church in Southern California. And by the way, I'll be in Simi Valley Saturday and in Pasadena our weekly Serve Jesus Church service on Sunday. and uh, But the church, the modern church, we try to do our part, but the modern church has done it just a dismal job on confronting and defeating witchcraft forces. I mean, the church itself has been invaded by these spiritual forces. And they're extending their nefarious reach to millions within the body of Christ. Take, for example, a young couple that I met Recently, they had been terribly affected by witchcraft and the powers of Jezebel. They attended a recent seminar, and Jezebel surfaced from within the young lady. The demon simply glared at me during the entire service. When I, when I speak of a glare, I'm speaking of a murderous glare. Jezebel, make no mistake about it, is a killer. She's a marriage breaker, a church breaker, a killer of prophets and the people of God. On this particular Night of ministry, I had my hands full as many other Jezebels and spirits of witchcraft were surfacing, and I was battling them in the name of Jesus. After the service concluded, she and her fiancé approached me, and numerous vicious demons surfaced. 
They screamed. They contorted her body and battled me. We are here to destroy her. We give her sicknesses and afflictions to torment her. Jezebel and the demons of witchcraft inform me. She has also been sent witchcraft. We forcefully broke the witchcraft off of her life, and through the power of the blood of Jesus, these demons were expelled, and numerous soul invaders were removed from her life. And she was so happy afterwards. But did you catch what I said? This woman had been sent witchcraft. So maybe you haven't I know some some of the issues is because people dabble into into witchcraft. Dabble, they dance with the devil. They enter the realms of the occult, sorcery, spiritism, and they get themselves in some serious, serious trouble. Some of it's unresolved generational witchcraft issues. Other times, it's witchcraft being sent to you. Now, how do you know? People often ask me, and I'll deal with this because this is a multi-part series on confronting the surge of witchcraft. People are ask me, how do you know witchcraft is being sent to you? Well, sometimes God will clearly reveal to you in a dream, in a vision, through the body of Christ, will reveal, and through the, through the process of deliverance, will reveal to you who's doing the witchcraft. You may be surprised. You may be shocked. And, and probably perplexed, mystified, puzzled in finding out who's sending the witchcraft. But it's common in this lady's case. It was She had been sent witchcraft. Thankfully, we were able to intervene. And I'm just so thankful we were able to intervene and deal with the witchcraft, break it off, and expelled it in the authority of Jesus Christ. I'm wondering if you if you are being targeted with witchcraft, you're experiencing some sabotage, delay, hindrance, opposition, obstacles. You're finding it in multidimensionally, meaning it's in your marriage and trying to raise your kids, personal health, your mental health, emotional health. Maybe it's your financial health. Maybe it's uh, uh, something going on with a, with a family unit, with your job. Your transportation, mode of transportation, it could be a, it could be anything. Do you feel like there's an element of sabotage? Because that's that's within in within witchcraft. There's sabotage. There's opposition and hindrances and obstacles and barriers. Are you experiencing some of this? Is it in your bloodline? Is it because of your own sin? Well, you need to repent, obviously. That begins with re- re- repentance and calling upon the name of Jesus Christ. Irregardless of what you're facing, the solution is Jesus. The solution is Jesus Christ. And we need to turn to him. In him, the Bible says in Ephesians 1-7, in him, that's Jesus. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, grace, unmerited favor. He loves you. Jesus does. And he wants to free you and liberate you from witchcraft. Make no mistake about it. Jesus is greater. Never forget that. Jesus has been risen from the grave. He is sitting on the throne. You have the power. You have the authority to deal with witchcraft. And on your behalf, God has allowed me to sit behind this microphone to speak with you. And I'm going to pray. You can pray with me. And we're going to do some warfare. We're going to respond to the surge of witchcraft in our day and age. We're not going to sit back and just let witchcraft just run over everybody. And again, this is a multi-series. I would encourage you to listen in. Make sure you get all the details about these podcasts at jbartlandmissions.com. But let me pray in him. 
We have redemption through his blood in Jesus Christ. There's no greater power than the blood of Jesus. So by that precious blood of Jesus Christ, I come against that witchcraft that's been sent to you, my friend, my brother, my sister. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, Jesus is able to rescue you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in right now at this, at this present moment. Jesus can deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. I use that name of Jesus. Jesus promises me in John 14 that I, if I just simply ask him, I mean, let me read it to you because that's a beautiful promise. John 14, a great promise, important promises in all of Scripture. This is John 14, verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it, verse 14. I will do it. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that witchcraft to release off your mind, your finances, your health your marriage, your ministry, your destiny. Let go of your children. I break it off your, your, your finances, your job, that promotion that God is wanting to give to you, bless you. That connection that you're, you, you are needing to make, I break any obstacles and any hindrances and barriers by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I command that witchcraft. I command that black magic, that voodoo, the sorcery, the occultism, the Satanism, to lift off now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the death curse. I break off that destruction curse off of you right now. Many of you getting delivered. Right now, come out. Come out of the belly. Up to the chest. Come out of the throat. Now, come out. Come out quickly. Come out. Out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There we go. Many of you being delivered right now by the power of the fire of the living God. Our God is an all-consuming fire. Now, fire of the living God upon you. Burn those demons off your mind, your heart, your body right now. Demons go to the abyss right now. Loosen. I command those chains to come off right now. All those chains to come off in the authority of Jesus Christ. Now call upon Jesus. Call upon Jesus right now. This is your time to call upon him. Call upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say, Lord Jesus, save me. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the power of your resurrection. I believe you're coming back soon. I surrender all to you. And Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence. Many of you are getting some deliverance right now, even through the podcast and listening to a podcast. Now, obviously, I know there may be other issues. This is where you need to reach out to us, jbartlandmissions.com, and let us know how we can help you. For we are here to help you in Jesus' name. I bless each of you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been a production of the Good News Podcasting Network, based in sunny Southern California. Feel free to contact for more information on the Deliverance Podcast at jbartlettmissions.com or call us at 877-483-5519. 